Hey everyone, welcome to Bible study, Thursday night Bible study, our faith school. Um, we're going to give people a few extra minutes to sign in and say hello. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm here with Raymond and Tony Rocha. Um, and just to let you know, whenever Tony says, you know, <laughs> speaking to Tony, he's speaking of himself and right. not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's two of us. Little Tony and Big Tony. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit more slimmer. <laughs> I was talking about height. Oh, okay. Just make sure you're... But anyway, good evening, everyone. There's Donald. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome Donald. <laughs> Praise God. Is, aren't you glad God has a sense of humor? Yes. I mean, we were created in his image, and if we got a sense of humor, it means he's got a sense of humor. <laughs> And he really laughs when we tell him our plan mm -hmm. and how he should bless us, right? Yeah. He says, oh, Toady. <laughs> Debbie, hey, how are you? She's doing better. She was in a car accident. We need to keep her covered in prayer. Yeah. Welcome, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Praise God. He kept her safe, kept her and Skipper safe. Lord. Praise God. Can everyone hear me okay? Can you say yes and amen? Yes, amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the people on that. <laughs> oh, I'm in a good mood tonight. I'm ready to get into the Word tonight. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about who is Jesus. And, you know, we know the basics of who he is, but there is a lot more about Jesus than we realize. You know, there's so many different facets of who Jesus is. You know, growing up, if you've seen the picture of Jesus, he was usually blonde hair and blue eyes, you know, but that's probably not the case. He was Jewish. Um, Donald said yes and amen, so he can hear me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, we're going to give people a few minutes. Hopefully Tammy will find the um, Bernadette. Good evening. Tammy always is challenged when she's trying to sign in. And uh, so tonight we just believe the Holy Spirit's going to reveal to her how to sign in. Is everyone doing well tonight? I believe we are. Yes, yes. Thank you. Amen. You know, the first day of summer is next week. Can you believe that? I know. Wow. <laughs> you know, one of the things, you know, because I'm not a big fan of the summers here in Texas. So yeah. when I know, right, the first day of summer is usually the beginning of my hope because it means the days become shorter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we're heading towards when it's fall. Fall is usually my favorite part. Yeah, mm -hmm. So Donald, yes. Well, let's get started. And as people um, sign in, they can join in with us. Um, so anyway, we're talking about who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? And let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for giving us ears to hear what you, Holy Spirit, will be saying through your word. We thank you that uh, we're, we're going to receive greater revelation, uh, revelation knowledge with understanding and wisdom and mm -hmm. all the things that we need to have to receive the word and to apply the word to our lives. Uh, so, Lord, right now, we give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So who is Jesus? We're going to start in John 1. Uh, we, a lot of us know this and it's you know he's the savior of the world he is yes. the savior jesus That's is the savior is. Mm -hmm. he is the son of god yes hallelujah he was he's the lamb of god yes. who was crucified mm -hmm. for Let's our sin going. i know amen <laughs> hallelujah and donald said yard work uh <laughs> yeah that's part of summer isn't it <laughs> so john one Let's uh, get there. Let me get there. And I, I'm kind of putting together the foundation, and then we're going to go a little bit farther of who Jesus is. And in John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Now, just take a minute and think about this. This is before even the creation, before the universe was created. Jesus has always been part of the Father and of the Holy Spirit as well. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, they were there uh, before the beginning. They were there before the earth was formed or cre creation was formed. So they've always been. Mm 
-hmm. There was, they were, and it kind of blows my mind a little bit to think about that. Cause you know, as a young person, I would say, well, God created us, but who created God? Mm -hmm. You know, because he has always been. And our, ma our minds can't phantom that, yeah. you know, to think about that. And, and it's not being disrespectful. It's just, it's trying to figure things out. But a lot of times you can't figure out everything. I, I just know by faith that God has always been there. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't need to know the rest of it. I just know, you know, here it says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you're thinking about that, and the Word represents Jesus. They've always been three in one. I think about uh, Moses when he said, "Well, who do I who do I say sent me? I am. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. I am what? And I love that the way somebody put it one time. Well, who are you? I am. I am your healer. Amen. I am your deliverer." I am your provider. Amen. I am, and keep filling the blank. Yeah. And you know, that's what's so good about what you said when God said, just say, I am. Mm -hmm. Tell him I am. It means that there, there's, God is unlimited. You know, yeah. just to know the one who was there, he's always been. So there's never been a beginning or an end. Mm -hmm. He's always been. And, and it just makes, you know, and even talking about it in this, um, way about the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God even before the creation they were there and then you think about that just makes to me makes God even bigger yes that you know we we're in a universe that is humongous Very right there was, yeah I mean what there's billions of galaxies mm -hmm. throughout the whole universe mm -hmm. and God is bigger than the universe mm -hmm. God created the universe yeah. And so when we, you know, when somebody, you ask somebody, well, have you prayed about, have you asked God to help you? No, he's too busy. Hello, he created the universe. I mean, I believe he, he he's multitask. He can multitask, yeah. you know, and what we think is big to us is nothing for God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to get past this. I don't want to ask him, you know, you need to ask. You don't receive because you don't ask. You have not because you ask not. You know, well, you don't seek, you don't find, you don't, the door isn't open unless you knock, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's, it's again, you have to, how do you say, you have to be proactive mm -hmm. and it, it's part of the journey. It's part of this walk with Jesus. Go ahead. I like what he dropped in my spirit years ago and it was when I got uh, kind of lazy and, and not seeking him and, and, um, when he finally got my attention again and, and said these words to me, I'll never forget them. You're limited, but I'm limitless. Amen. You're limited, but I'm limitless. And so I was like, I'm the one that's sitting on the sideline. I'm the one that's not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Seek me and you'll find me. Knock and the door will be open. It's like I come and knock on your door. I expect you to be home. I mean, I mean to see you. Yeah. And so you're going to answer the door because you're expecting. Yeah. And so I believe that's the same way with, with the Lord. He's expecting us. Yeah. But we only show up when we want something. Yeah. When we know that we need him all the time. Yeah. Consciously or unconsciously. And we need to stay in fellowship with him. Yeah. Fellowship keeps us on track. Yeah. When we get off track is when, like you said, we break that uh, uh, spending time with him. You know, that communing. And so let's go a little bit farther than this. So it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. This is talking about Jesus. Everything created was created through Jesus. He's mm -hmm. the Word, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you look at this as a big picture, how much Jesus, his role um, in creation well, when God said, be light, that was the word, yes. Jesus. Be light, spoken. And what did it say in the beginning that the earth was without form and void and the spirit was hovering yes. over the emptiness, yes. the darkness? Yes. That's the Holy Spirit. Yes. He was waiting for Jesus to speak. God speak the word, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit went to creating. Mm -hmm. And he's doing the same thing today. The Holy Spirit is on standby. He's waiting 
for you. You keep on saying you're waiting for God. God is waiting on you yes. to speak his word. Mm -hmm. You know, the word, Jesus. And we're, let's go a little bit farther before I get ahead of myself mm -hmm. here. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Mm -hmm. So the light, you know, the light. We have Christ. When we accept Christ, his light comes in us. Our, our spirit man comes alive. Yeah. And so it illuminates. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of talking about in prayer, about all the stuff kind of going on in our world. Well, let your light shine. Let the light of Christ shine and illuminate darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's interesting because we can murmur and complain about everything or we can pray about things or declare the word of God and see a change. Change isn't going to happen in murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. Change will only happen when we declare the word of God. Yes. You know, the word goes out and accomplishes its purpose, not my murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear, you, we saw what happened to the Israelites in the desert. They murmured, complained, and they remained. Mm -hmm. They were in the desert for 40 years mm -hmm. because they complained. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I have to give it to Moses having to deal with him for 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> and the guy wanted to eliminate him and get rid of him. You know, I may have had a second thought on that one after for me. For you years, okay, God, go ahead. <laughs> you know, he's stopping God from doing it. But, but the point of it is, is we all have purpose. Mm -hmm. We were put on this earth with a purpose. Yes. No matter if anybody likes us or don't like us or they talk bad about us or they don't or whatever, we're here on this earth for a reason. God has put us on this earth for a reason. Mm -hmm. And thank God for Jesus. Yeah, he gets us through. And then it goes on in verse 6. It says, that, it says, there came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify, testifying concerning the light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Mm -hmm. That was John's job. He wasn't like, and you know, with Mother Mary, and I, you know, and I don't want to go too far in that, but she was a vessel. She was created to be the vessel to give birth to the Son of God. Yes. That was, you know, that was her purpose to give birth to the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and you read about all these different people in the Bible and you get to know their purpose. Why were they in the Word? You know, it's like the woman um, th with the issue of blood or even the, the one, uh, Mary, who anointed Jesus. And remember what Jesus said? He says, as long as the gospels preach, she will be mentioned throughout history mm -hmm. for what she has done. She had a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that was, he said, he, she was preparing his body for burial. Mm -hmm. And he hadn't even died yet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whatever your purpose is and... Maybe you don't know completely what your purpose is, but you, I think everyone has a sense of what their purpose is. Mm -hmm. And what is it that you like? What is it that touches other people? What is it that, um, you know, if you're an encourager, you know, that's part of your purpose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's something on this earth that only you can do. I mean, other people could do, but there's something that God wants to use you to do yes. with people around you mm -hmm. to be a blessing. And they're always going to, let me just tell everybody, there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be people say, you can't do this. But you know what? We can do all things through Christ Jesus oh, yeah. who strengthens us. Mm -hmm. There's another aspect. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens mm -hmm. us. Let's go on farther here. It says, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Mm -hmm. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. You know, isn't that mind-boggling? That everything was created through Jesus, and yet people will not accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. You know, and I said this a few weeks ago, you watch television, famous people, it, it just is something else. You know, there's other words for it. But how they will seek other 
idols and gods and, you know, uh, religions and all these different things, but they won't seek Jesus because he's not cool enough. They're afraid that, they're, they're, number one, it's going to cause them to be vulnerable as a famous person. Wow. Now, if I start proclaiming this Jesus thing, I'm going to become vulnerable and I'm not going to be at the top of the, the, my fame as if I'm just, you know, this person. But they're missing out on everything. You might have fame. You can still have fame and you can still be a believer. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine how much farther you can go with Jesus mm -hmm. than without him? Mm -hmm. You know, so, but again, here it says, every, the world was created, made through him, but yet the world did not recognize him. Or the people didn't even re receive him. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, became the right to become children of God. The children born not of the natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband, uh, husband's will, but born of God. Mm -hmm. We as we receive Jesus, we're born again. That's where that word born again comes. We're born, we were born in the natural sense, but now our spirit's been born so that we're born again. Yes. So now we're alive. We're truly alive. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say in verse 14, it says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow, praise God. And so we could probably say right now, well, you know, they're just talking about when the disciples saw him and they saw, uh, here it says, um, they saw the glory of the one and only he came from the Father. But we see Jesus to this day. I can see Jesus in you, Raymond or Tony. When you're declaring about Jesus, you're sharing about Jesus, I see Jesus. I see him in what you're saying and how you're perceiving him and how you treat others. You know, Jesus says, you've done, on, you've done the, uh, the least unto one, you've done it unto me. Well, what do you mean, Lord? What do you say that, you know, they were saying, what do you mean you, we didn't give you a drink of water, we didn't do this? Well, you've done unto the least, you've done unto me. Mm -hmm. And so we need to, you know, we were talking a little bit about this, our nation needs to see Jesus, mm -hmm. the real Jesus, the real Jesus. Yes. And how do are they going to see the real Jesus unless we show them? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't care if you go to church; doesn't mean you're saved. Mm -hmm. I go well. I've gone to church all my life. Did you ever accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you say say yes, then you're saved. Well, no, my grandmother did. Well, your grandmother is maybe not on this planet right now. And the other thing, it's a, re it's a personal relationship with Jesus. Yes. You have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Nobody can accept him for you. Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Think about it. Everything that's been created was created through him. Mm -hmm. And the God of the universe who left heaven, came to this earth to die for us so that we could come back into this right standing with the Father. Mm -hmm. Now, what other God would do something like that? There is no other little G gods. I know. Thank you, Jesus. And so here it says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the One and Only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So that's, we're saying, who is Jesus? Well, he's the word. Who is Jesus? The one who, the word that was made flesh to dwell amongst us. You know, who is Jesus? And we we're saying who he is, you know, our savior and all these things. But we, we need to get this, uh, we need a better understanding. He's more than the picture on the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, he, and that's great. But just think of all the facets of Jesus that we we, we're not seeing because we're not looking. Yes. Go ahead. I love that song that we sing on Sundays. And uh, we mentioned one of the deliverers where, uh, you know the song, Pastor Tony, it says, He is my healer, He is my redeemer, and He is my deliverer. That song. Yeah. Is that the right three words? Yeah. Right? Every praise. Yeah. Every praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, oh, man, that is so awesome. Yeah. That just, yeah. I mean, that just stirs me up. And the thing that is, you know, he's, 
his name is so powerful yes. at the name of Jesus every knee has to bow mm -hmm. and so we are blessed yes. we're truly blessed go to Colossians 1 we're gonna go there we're talking about who is Jesus good evening Bernadette uh, Colossians it was interesting today I was talking uh, Tony and Raymond that I went and ministered at a chapel today for a ministry and it was really interesting because when I got there um, they played a CD and in the CD was the song was in Jesus name the one we sing here mm -hmm. and I went wow that's really great and I told them that I said you know a, f a couple years ago I think I was kind of in a you know kind of a challenging time in my life and and this song came on the radio and in Jesus name and it goes down the list of in Jesus name you must flee in Jesus name that da, 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 in Jesus name and it really ministered to me and it was like wow that's powerful and it's all scripture in Jesus name and so I was I was telling them today it's wow that was really powerful it reminded me of what Jesus um, that song and then at the beginning this lady started praying and she was like I told her I said wow that was powerful and it wasn't this elaborate prayer it reminded me of our prayer people here and she was just hitting that target she just hitting that target and she, it was just powerful because she was praying from her heart she wasn't praying from her head she was praying from her heart and I'm and I was telling her I said wow that is powerful and just a short simple powerful prayer and and it just goes to show you what God is doing in one ministry, he's doing in another ministry. Jesus is everywhere. And as long as he's lifted up, he'll draw a man. Mm -hmm. As long as Jesus is proclaimed as Lord and Savior, we can declare him and that every knee has to bow and we can be the light where there's darkness. You know, that's our job is to be the light of Christ yes. wherever we go. Amen? Amen. In Colossians 1.15... We're going to go there. Let me go there. Let me go there. Colossians 1.15. This is really powerful. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. That's powerful right there. Let me read that again. And it, uh, it says, He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Wow. Think about it. Without Jesus, everything crumbles. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we could say that in our lives. Mm -hmm. So when we have a tendency to wander away and get busy, being busy, and not taking the time to spend with the Lord, we wonder why things kind of get weird or you know crumble, or we wonder why we're dry, or we wonder why, why am I going through this? It's like, when was the last time you talked to Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know? I was, I, was, I was thinking about being disconnected from the vine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being not connected to the vine. And, and we were talking, when you were uh, talking a moment ago about the darkness, um, and going, you know, going through stuff and being stuck. In my mind, I kept seeing uh, when a car gets stuck in the mud mm. and the wheel is just spinning and you're uh -huh. trying to get out, you're stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Well, when I call on his name, then I can move forward. Yeah. I'm moving forward. I'm not stuck in the mud. Yeah. The wheel is not stuck in the mud and just spinning uh, aimlessly. Yeah. I'm moving forward because I'm out of the darkness, whatever that darkness is to you, worry, yeah, fear, yeah. anxiety. I'm in the dark at the moment. Yeah. But when I start talking to him, all of a sudden, it's like hope appears, yeah. peace appears. Uh, everything's gonna be okay. All is well with my soul Amen. And, and so on and so on. That's because faith is rising up. Yeah. Yes. It, it, yeah. it all starts with faith. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's, that's it's like the Holy Spirit is taking over and yes. reminding me, mm -hmm. reminding me. So then I'm opening my mouth yeah. and speaking the word. Mm -hmm. Not, and that's so powerful to say that because yeah. we can hear we're sending the word out and it has it causes this ripple effect. And it's like it's pushing everything out of yeah. the way. And it's living water. 
Yeah. You know, like the woman at the well, she, Jesus said, if you knew who asked you for a drink, you would ask him mm -hmm. for the living water yeah. that you'll never thirst again. Yes. But the thing of it is, is we have to continue. When you project or you uh, pour out the living water through uh, sharing about Jesus, it refurbishes you. Mm -hmm. It refreshes you because as the living water is going out through your words, new living water is coming in. Mm -hmm. I think we become stagnant a lot of times because we're not projecting the word of God. We're not uh, speaking it out. We're not letting it out to bless others. So it just becomes this pond inside us and it's not being refreshed with new water. You know, the Holy Spirit is stirring us up. And it, kind of going back to what you said, Tony, about the darkness, you know, we, maybe I'm going to get on a high horse right now, but we complain about our nation and the world and how it is. Instead of complaining, and I've said this before, we need to start speaking about Jesus, sharing Jesus. It's about the light, the yeah. light. We're like we like when we get back into spending time with the Lord, the light becomes brighter in us. Mm -hmm. We become, oh wow, refreshed. Wow, you know what? I, I'm feeling better because what we're doing is with the light. We're letting the light in, and 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 so as we project the light and as we share, it should also cause others for the light to become bright. You know, if you're in darkness. You, you're, you don't know if you're being deceived because you're in darkness. You can't see anything. You can't see the truth because it's dark. Well, if we present Jesus, that's a better way of saying it, present Jesus so that the light will become brighter, then people will begin to see the truth, and then they'll know the truth, and the truth will set them free. Mm -hmm. We're trying to come at things by, through the back door. When Jesus doesn't need to be brought in the back door, he needs to be brought in the front door mm -hmm. where the light becomes comes into the room. Right. And so I, I just, you know, I want to challenge us tonight. Instead, tomorrow, instead of complaining about what's going on in our country, let's start declaring Jesus over our country. Yeah. Where, How can I brighten um, areas in our country? How can I brighten my neighborhood up? How can I brighten my family? You know, whether it's prayer or sharing Jesus or encouraging somebody with Jesus, that will cause the light to become brighter. I know one thing we're not to say in the pulpit, especially in the pulpit, and they say it all the time, America's going to hell. Why would a preacher say that? Why all these believers that are living in America, that are born again filled, was the spirit. They're actually saying they're going to hell. They're cursing. They're cursing. cursing. Exactly. And these are well known preachers. Yeah. And, you... and and I love what my we're talking about how the Christians they want to uh, rule the physical world. And they're not happy the way things go. And I remember what my pastor always said. Judge even starts in the house of God. Yeah. If you can't get your stuff together in the yeah. house of God you have no business talking about out there yeah. because nobody's going to listen to you and they're going to mock you and they're going to make fun of you. Yeah. You got to get your house in order. You got to get your house in order. And, so, and that's individually as well as ministry, as corporately. Again, it's easy to judge somebody right. for what they're doing when we forget about where we've come from or, you know, or what we're going through. We all go through things. We're all tempted. Every one of us. I don't care how holy you think you are. You're going to be tempted in one way or another. You know what I'm tempted with may not be what tempts you or vice versa. But we're all tempted. We all make mistakes. We all sin. We all do these things. And that's where grace comes in. You know, grace covers. It's what? Undeserved favor. And so if I'm being shown mercy and grace, why am I not showing mercy and grace? You know, who am I to get up on a pedestal and start pointing the finger yes. when God is working in me? He's doing, you know, I, I can't fix you. I'm working on the Lord's working on me to fix me. Yeah. And so, I love what Joseph Prince uh, said last night. I was listening to him. He said, being right doesn't justify you. The only thing that justifies you is Jesus. Ooh, that is yeah. good. Isn't that powerful? That is very powerful. You took the word right out of my mouth. I was going to, I'm sorry, I was no. going to respond to what Raymond said a moment ago about ministers saying that uh, 
America's going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Well, sometimes ministers, I guess, they're catering, catering to their audience. And so the one that we should be catering to is, is Jesus. Amen. Uh, bring Jesus, uh, we're catering him to the congregation, to Amen. ourselves. We're feeding ourselves as well. Amen. So the most important person in our life should be Jesus. Amen. That should be the most important person. Let me go a little bit farther. Yes. Hallelujah. I, I love somebody's uh, meme on here. They're clapping. <laughs> <laughs> so it says here, it says, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy, uh, this, you know, he's it. And it says, the God, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Ooh, awesome. God had, you know, was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Isn't that good? Yes. So what does it mean, peace through his blood? Because remember, before we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we were an enemy, enemy of God. Mm -hmm. You know, we... Uh, we didn't accept Christ. We didn't accept the word of God. So we're basically an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. And an enemy doesn't talk well of its enemies, usually, or think well of their enemies. And so here, peace came through the blood of Jesus. Now I can have peace. You can have peace in knowing who Jesus is and who you are in Christ or Christ in you. So, you know, it's important to know who Jesus is. Um, and again, how do you know who Jesus is? Get to know him, get in the word. Mm -hmm. It reveals who he is. Spend time with him and pray. Go ahead. When you, when you read that a moment ago, what struck me was, uh, the, it came to my mind immediately with the 10 lepers mm -hmm. and the one that came back and Jesus said, who is this foreigner? <laughs> we were foreigners at one time. Yes. And he was an outcast and it was the outcast. Isn't it interesting? It's the outcast. Usually the ones that really um, dedicate themselves to the Lord mm -hmm. or, you know, they just basically give it all to him. Somebody, it, but if it's somebody that, oh yeah, I deserve this, usually it's going to be, you know, they're not going to surrender to Jesus a lot of times. But, but you're right. It was a foreigner. It was the outcast who actually came back to thank Jesus mm -hmm. for healing him. You know, the others didn't come back, yeah. but they he did. They did it publicly. Mm -hmm. They came back pu publicly the woman with the issue, uh, the guy that had leprosy, uh, who came at night, Nicodemus. Why didn't he do that in front of everybody? Yeah, the Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean you're right. Well, let's let's go on. So in Hebrews one three, it says and it's it says the sun is the radiance of God's glory, and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful word. Ooh, that's powerful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. After he had provided purification for sins, you know, that's when he went on the cross, he died, and the shedding of his blood was for the forgiveness of our sins. And it says he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So here it's giving, it's speaking of who Jesus is, the Son of the God. Uh, it says the Son is the radiance of God's glory mm -hmm. and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things, sustaining all things. Let me say that, sustaining all things. The, if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. Mm -mm. There is nothing. Mm -hmm. You can worship God, you call him God, but you got to know Jesus, his son. Mm -hmm. I mean, without Jesus, and he even says, you can't get to the Father unless you come through me. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to the Father unless you go through the Son. Yes. And, and there's nothing wrong with going through the Son. Jesus loves you. He's not here to judge your sins. He's not here to, or I should say, condemn you. He's here to love you to the Father. His yeah. job when he came to this earth was always to show people the Father. Mm -hmm. And he, what do you tell Thomas? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because mm -hmm. Thomas said, well, show us the Father. And Jesus, I could say, you know, I could just see Jesus going, oh, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas. 
if you've seen me, you've seen me, so you've seen the Father. And then yet, you want me to show you the Father? But again, remember, they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. Mm -hmm. So what we can understand, and we can go, well, how do they not know? Well, we got the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He reveals the truth. He, he makes things that seem that they don't make sense. He causes them to make sense to us, yes. you know, because it's spiritually discerned. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so it says here, it says sustaining all things in him. He sustains all things by his powerful word, the word of God, the word made flesh. You know, that's why it's important to read your Bible, to learn the word to use the word. And, and it says, after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. He's there now, seated at the right hand. Mm -hmm. Now, Hebrews, um, and that was in the NIV. Let me read it out of the Amplified. Brings a little bit more depth to it. It says, the sun is the radiance of the only expression of the glory of God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light beaming, the brilliant light, of the divine. Ooh, we're talking about the light, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't hear about Shekinah glory. I used to hear it a lot mm -hmm. in the circles of uh, the charismatic, mm -hmm. uh, the faith movement uh, in worship. And, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper about what the Shekinah glory is because it's kind of confusing when you've heard people talk about the Shekinah glory. Well, here it's really showing us what it means. So let me say it again. Hebrews 1, 3 in the Amplified. The sun is the radiance and the only expression of the glory of God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being the brilliant light of the divine, and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his Father's essence in upholding and maintaining and propelling all things, uh, the entire physical and spiritual universe by his powerful word. So he's talking about the light. And again, it's all about Jesus. You know, Jesus, it's Jesus that's causing the universe to stay in place. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus that causes the planets. And I know, you know, there's uh, different reasons why from, uh, you know, why they stay in place. But if, it, if Jesus wasn't there, everything had would have spun out of control or not be in its place. That's a word for us too. Jesus causes you to stay in your rightful place. Mm -hmm. You know, that position mm -hmm. of authority, that position of favor. When somebody wants to kill you, Jesus is protecting you. Those who are trying to curse you, just so what you're talking about, Raymond, you know, people are cursing even from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and people are not realizing they're cursing instead of they're trying to make a point, but really you're presenting, you're proclaiming a curse. And you know what's so bad about it? They say, amen. So be it, yeah. <laughs> America's going to hell. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and again, there's power in the tongue. Life and death is in the tongue. If we want to see change, and that's our challenge, yeah. and I'm going to, Holy Spirit, remind us, the challenge is instead of complaining about our nation, start praying for our nation. Mm -hmm. Start declaring the goodness of God on our nation. You know, you, we're going to change things by what we say. Mm -hmm. exactly. There are power, God created with the word, you know, and so, and it said at the beginning, the word was with God, the word was God, you know, and in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And so it tells us the word was before the creation, the word created. Mm -hmm. So what we say can create or tear down. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and there, our country has problems. Yes. All country has problems. Your family has problems. My family has problems, you know, but you don't throw them all away because there's problems. What do you do? You're going to start, you want things to change for the better. How does it change for the better? What you say can cause things to change. Amen? Go ahead. I'm going to say that listening to that, um, when we speak and we're complaining about something, I have no control over what's going on out there. 
But when I'm speaking the word, it changes me on the inside. Yeah. And I start to calm down. Why am I trying to govern something when I can't even govern myself? Yeah. Why am I uh, speaking all of this and that when I don't have any control over this or that? But the one thing that I do know is that when I stop murmuring and complaining and I uh, turn to Jesus, what happens? Peace comes in. Amen. The Prince of Peace. Yes. And it's talking about his blood brought peace. Yes. The prince came in. Yes. You know, when you accepted Jesus, he came into your life and brings peace. Yes. And so that's why it's important to have Jesus in our life, to keep focused on Jesus, because everything around us is all, you know, just everywhere. Yes. And it brings distraction and chaos. Yes. And, you know, and that's what causes us to lose our peace right. because we got our eyes off of Jesus. Yes. And we're getting it on the situation instead yes. of keeping our eyes on Jesus. Yes. Let me read the rest of Hebrews 1.3 uh, because it's amplified, so it's a lot longer. It says, "We, when he himself and no other, I love this, when he himself and no other had, by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, accomplished purification from sins and established our freedom from guilt, he sat down revealing his complete work at the right hand of the majesty on high, revealing his divine authority. Ooh, isn't that good? Mm -hmm. I, I just want to read, when he himself and no other had by offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, accomplished purification from sins and established our freedom from guilt, he sat down revealing his complete work at the right hand of the majesty on high, Revealing his divine authority. Ooh, his divine authority. Jesus and his divine authority. Why wouldn't you want Jesus? You know, Jesus, his spirit lives in us. His divine authority is in us. As he is in heaven, so are we here on this earth, the Bible says. So as he is in heaven, so are we here on this earth. Can you imagine when we get revelation of who we are here on this earth? Christ in us, the hope of glory. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Then what is stopping you from being blessed? You know what's stopping us? Our mouth and our lack of faith. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, I guess I'm not going to make it. Well, there you go. You're not going to make it. You proclaimed it. Mm -hmm. You're going to get, you know, you, it says, uh, you know, what you say, you'll eat your words. You'll eat the fruit of your words. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be careful what you say, even in the midst of being angry. <laughs> you know, there's times I tell the Lord, I get frustrated. I said, Lord, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this. I just want to have a moment with you. I'm just right now frustrated. Da, 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 da. But he's okay with that because I'm having a conversation with him. He knows my heart. I just need to blow off some steam with him and say, you know, whatever. But... There comes a time we have to be really careful what we're saying mm -hmm. because there's power in our words. And again, um, and I want to just share a little bit about the Shekinah. What is the, the word Shekinah? I, I kind of looked it up here. I think it's important. If we're going to say these words, we need to know what yes, they mean. Yes. It says the word Shekinah does not appear in Scripture, but has been used by both Christians and Jews to describe the visible divine presence of God. Listen to that. In such things as the burning bush, that would be considered the Shekinah glory. Because, you know, it was something that, how can this bush be burning but not being burned up? So it says, in such things as the burning bush, the cloud and the pillar of fire that led the Hebrews in the wilderness, and the presence of God that rested between the cherubims over the mercy seat of the ark. That would be the Shekinah glory, you know, because I've heard it described in so many different ways. And, you know, in worship, we want the Shekinah glory to show up. And what it is, it's the manifestation yes. of God's glory, just as the burning bush was the manifestation, mm -hmm. the, the pillar, you know, the f fire at night and the cloud of day, you know, was the Shekinah glory. It's saying here and then the um, what, in the presence of God between the cherubims on the Ark of the uh, where his presence would be between the cherubim. So, um, so that's what the Shekinah glory is. 
Let's go a little bit farther. We're coming to close to our so time. So would that be the Holy of Holies then for... Uh, the Ark would be, yeah, the be, yeah, the Shekinah. You know, they go in there. I mean, the thing of it is, as we know, to go <laughs> in the Ark or go into the Holy of Holies, you better have your act right. together or you're going to drop dead. Right. <laughs> you know, you're going to drop dead. That's why they tied a rope on their leg to really pull them out. They had bells on them. And so when the bells stopped moving, uh-oh, another one bites the dust pretty much. So what happens when you receive revelation of who Jesus is? Let's go to Matthew 16. And it's on your, yeah. Matthew 16, I've read this before, but it's important to know why we need to know who Jesus is. And it's important that you know who Jesus is. Not that you know your, who your grandmother knows or who sister so-and-so knows. You have got to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Nobody can have your personal relationship with Jesus. Man. Nobody can go to him like you can. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through anybody to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can go directly to the throne of grace, the yes. Bible says. Mm -hmm. You know, and... And you can have somebody pray with you and pray, uh, intercede for you and stuff, but it's important that you seek the Lord. It's important that you ask the Lord. It's important that you believe the Word of God for yourself and for others. Um, again, you're created by the Lord. You're His creation. You're, you're His child. You're His co-heirs of Jesus. You're his brother, so to speak. And it's important to have that personal relationship. You need to go to him. You don't always want somebody else to go to him. You need to go to him. You need to talk to him. Mm -hmm. Somebody doesn't need to talk on your behalf. Well, next time you pray, would you pray for me? Well, yeah, I can pray for you, but you know what? You could pray too. Well, I don't know how to pray. Yeah, you do. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I need help. Yes. Jesus, heal my body. Lord, you know, that's the beginning of learning how to pray. And then as you get to know the word, then you can add some scripture to it and say, hey, Lord, your word says that by your stripes I'm healed. So I'm declaring right now that my body is receiving healing because you provided healing. You know, it's ways you don't have to pray out of King James. You know, you don't have to pray all these elaborate prayers. You just talk to him like we're talking. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lord, I'm just really having a bad day today. Go ahead. I have a question. Yeah. Um, here where you spoke, uh, the word that's kind of glory does not appear in Scripture, but has been used by both Christians and Jews to describe the visible divine presence of God. And so you're talking about the burning bush and the, cl the cloud. Um, those are things they needed to see with their physical eyes. Yeah. So the to me, the, the glory... We don't see it with our physical eyes. We see it with our spiritual eyes. Yes. And we, we experience him. It's something that, uh, it, it's an internal thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to go up here and, and see this. I don't need to see, uh, like, the, like they were asking jo Jesus, show us a sign, show us a sign, mm -hmm. when Jesus says, I am the sign. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and the thing of it is, I would like to see the Shekinah glory in the sense that it would be so neat to see God. That's what it is. It's the manifestation yes. of his glory. It's, a, it's an outward manifestation. Yes. And I'll give you an example of that. Is we were doing praise and worship practice, and I've shared this before. And I had a guy named Jerry who played the piano, and he could play. Man, he played that piano. I, were you coming when he was here? Yes, play yes. piano. And so he could play by ear, and he's just really anointed. Mm -hmm. And we were doing practice one uh, one of the nights of the week, and we were just worshiping the team. And we just got in the presence of God. I mean, it was really strong. And we were just, when we got down, we were like, whoa. And then he says, I'm going to tell you something. I saw my hands moving. God was directing my hands, and they were going all over. And I was watching the glory of God. And that's the Shekinah glory, yes. is you're seeing God manifest in the natural. Yes. And, you know, his glory, and again, we receive things by faith, but what what gives kind of like the icing on the cake is when you see with your natural eyes God moving. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, and there's ways of seeing his Shekinah glory as it's talking about. And I think there's other ways that we probably have seen it, 
but didn't realize it in um, somebody's life being transformed. You know, somebody who is just as mean as the devil and how it changed drastically. Yes. You know, I would say that would be a manifestation mm -hmm. of God's glory. Mm -hmm. um, because, but you're right, they had to see it um, to believe it. It was a way of, you know, again, they didn't have the spirit of God as we do, mm -hmm. you know, back then. And uh, so, uh, but it, you know, whatever can help people as a tool to believe in Jesus, yeah. hey, I'm open to that. And plus, I want to see his glory. I yeah. want to see, because we're, we're caught up in the natural, all we see in the natural, and we have to see things in the spirit realm with our spiritual eyes. But I want things to come out of the spirit realm and in the natural yeah. and see these things. And, and it builds our faith. Mm -hmm. It encourages us to say, when the devil says, oh, this doesn't work. Oh, yeah, it does. We've seen it with our own eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary Lou, yes. th that's evidence. Yeah. We prayed, believing God for a healer. And I'm watching her walk like nothing's wrong and her just glowing. That, to me, would be this Shekinah glory, yeah. man. You mentioned something about the physical, and this, this just came to me by revelation. Back in the Old Testament, uh, the temple <clears throat> was was a physical thing. It was it was the church, but now we are the temple of God. Yeah, yes. we are the temple. Of God. God's spirit dwells in us. <clears throat> Before God's spirit dwelt in the temple and the ark. Yeah. So so there's you're talking about physical. You know, spiritually, we are the living temple of the Holy Spirit. We are what the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so now we carry them everywhere we go. Exactly. And that's why I kind of get onto people say, "Well, they took prayer out of church and took prayer out of our schools and that stuff." Well, you got the Holy Spirit wherever you go. You got the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You're taking the Spirit of Christ wherever you go. Mm -hmm. You know, you could pray anywhere. Nobody can keep you from praying. You pray in the Spirit. They don't even need to know you're praying. Right. But you want them to see you praying. <laughs> That's the problem. You want to make a presentation instead of, you know what? And what did the Word tell us? When you pray, go in your prayer closet and pray, right? Mm -hmm. You don't shout it out. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. You know, and I know there's a lot. Schools need a lot of help. You know, I know all that stuff. And, you know, I understand all that stuff. But we're putting a limit on Jesus. But like you're saying he's limitless. Just because one door shuts, he can open another door. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, we got to wake up, y'all. <laughs> we are the children of the Most High God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells within each and every one of us. Nothing can stop us. Mm -hmm. You put Jesus first, nothing can stop you. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Let's go into this, and then we'll probably need to close. Um, so we're talking about Matthew 16, verse 13. Why? What happens when you receive revelation of who Jesus is? Here's a perfect example. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. See, that's a problem right there because people don't know who Jesus is and they're wondering why their life doesn't have power in it. They wonder why. And we all go through things, but he brings us through. We are more than conquerors. We are always victorious. We always triumph, the word of God says. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who Jesus is, then that's a problem. That's a big problem. And so let's go on a little bit farther and we'll know who Jesus is right he says, but what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am, Simon Peter? Or who do you say I am? This is Jesus asking Simon. Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's who Jesus is. I want you to get that right now, who Jesus is. This is what Peter said. He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That is who Jesus is. And then it goes on. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, will not overcome it. And so Jesus is saying, you know what, Peter? You got revelation. I'm going to use you to further my kingdom of God, and not even the gates of hell can prevail against you. Mm -hmm. He said, because you got revelation of who I am. 
If people would get revelation of who Jesus is, we would see people more victorious. We would see them receive uh, more of the word. We'd see, we'd see things change. We'd see them changing our nation with declaring the word of God and operating in the power of Jesus Christ. But we're all distracted by all this stuff. So Peter had revelation, and then it goes on to say in verse 19, I will give you the keys. It says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Hallelujah. He's been given the keys to heaven. And whatever, and he's saying, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And what that's talking about, remember the heavenlies is that area where there's a lot of demonic, there's the angels, there's all this stuff. When you make a declaration, it's going up into the heavenlies and it's being, you know, it's, it's manifesting. That's where the battle is. Mm -hmm. And so when he's saying, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavenlies. If you're bind, binding sickness, that spirit of sickness, you're binding in the heavenlies. Whatever you loose on earth are being loose in the heavenlies. I'm loosing healing. I'm loosing victory. Well, what is it doing in the heavenlies? The angels are going to work and they're loosing the blessing. So again, revelation of who Jesus is gives you begin to operate in authority and, and you begin to see things happen because you have revelation of who Jesus really is. I'm going to read this one thing. We're coming to a close right now. In John 4, 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Mm -hmm. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful word. Whether you understand, uh, or he's saying, believe me when I say that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. Or if you can't see that, at least believe on the evidence of the works that are happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and so tonight, I, I, I really feel the, the power of the word tonight. Mm -hmm. I feel the spirit of the Lord really speaking to each one of us tonight about who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And so that you and I can operate in that authority and power that Jesus says that we've been given mm -hmm. over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall harm us. Right. And so that you, you know, well, I can't get a hold of the pastor. Well, you make a declaration. You pray. You take authority over that is coming against you mm -hmm. or your children or your family or whatever. And so you do your part. Use the word of God. You were created in the image of God. You are created in his image and his likeness. Mm -hmm. You have been given authority on this earth to take dominion of this earth. Adam and Eve messed up and gave it to Satan, but Jesus came and died on the cross and went and got it and gave it back to us. We have it now. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you that it went out and it accomplished its purpose. We thank you for encouraging each and every person listening to this message. I thank you that the Holy Ghost lights are coming on in each and every one of us right now. That now that the light is illuminating the truth of your word, Lord. I thank you right now that there's somebody that uh, you have not accepted Jesus. And right now, I want you to pray with me. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, say, pray with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. I confess that Jesus is your son that died for my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you pray that, you're going to heaven. So, Lord, I continue on with the prayer to say tonight, 
we have received greater revelation and we're going to use that revelation for your glory, but for also to benefit us in walking in victory in every area of our lives. So we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory, Jesus, as you deserve. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you all. Share this uh, teaching with somebody. Let somebody know about it. It'll probably be on YouTube tomorrow so that you can let somebody know about it. You know, we I'm so excited to say we have about over 700 people that are following us now wow. on Grace Fellowship on our wow. Facebook. Let's expand it. Let's let other people know about our ministry of Grace Fellowship in Christ Jesus here in Dallas, Texas through Facebook and also, also through YouTube. So uh, anyway, God bless you. Good night. And we'll talk to you next time. God bless you.